waiting to exhale. When I say those words, an author should pop to your mind. She's a true inspiration. She's out on the West Coast. Her name is Terry McMillan. Soon she'll be in Atlanta and I can't wait to meet her in person. But she's out with her new best-selling book. But Terry, I've got to ask you, I read the other day that 5 a.m. is your favorite hour of the day. Why? Well, I'll put it this way. I always felt that, well, I've learned that in the morning is when I have my best energy. I'm not worrying about what's going to happen the rest of the day. I don't have time to deal with with what happens during the day. I So I get to use my best energy and emotionally and mentally I'm somewhat clear. And so before my quote unquote day actually gets started, I get to live in this other world and enter there first and then come out and say, oh Lord, did I have to, did he, why did they call? Um, and I don't feel like talking to this person or oh, Lord, is that AT&T again? Um, <laughs> whatever, but that's pretty much it. It's a very quiet time and you can hear yourself, not just think, but also what you feel. Well, I'll trust that 5 a.m. is as calm as you say because I don't think I've ever been up that early by choice. But let me ask you, you have numerous New York Times bestsellers, but let's ask you about this book right here. What did you enjoy most about writing it? Honestly, I enjoyed being other people. I enjoyed looking at the world through someone else's eyes, through a child's eye, through a crackhead's eye. Um, I wanted to know because, you know, writing is a really a good opportunity to develop a certain level of compassion and empathy. And I do it, I almost always choose characters that I'm not particularly crazy about or I don't understand their behavior and or I don't, I don't know what motivates them. Or I'm just curious, and especially in terms of, uh, in this case, I had two children, and I don't know what it felt would feel like to be abandoned. I I don't not as a child. I don't know how that would feel. So it was an opportunity to tell delve into other people's hearts, and so that's pretty much it. This book has some challenging underlying themes with drugs and fidelity, incarceration, divorce, but what was it about incarceration that really touched your heart as you did research and wrote about it? Well, I didn't have to do a whole lot of research. Um, I know a lot of, there are a lot of people in my family over the years that have been incarcerated, some of whom still are, and I know almost everybody I know that at least African Americans um, know someone in their family who's in jail or in prison. Um, it's, a, it's a pandemic and I empathize with them in some cases because some of them are in prison for stupid things that could have been avoided and things that they shouldn't even be in there for. And in some cases I don't understand. Um, I wish that, I wish that more black men weren't in prison, obviously. Um, that's my prayer. And so I wanted to draw attention to it because they are often ignored and just looked at as criminals and all of them are not criminals. Um, sometimes they've, they've done criminal things, but a lot of the stuff, everybody in there is not a murderer. Some people stole because they needed to. Some people stole because it was a sport. But sometimes people do learn from their mistakes, and in some cases, some of them don't get a chance to do that. And I empathize with them. But not, sociop but not sociopaths. I don't care what color they are, they can stay in there. Exactly, and another theme you touched on even earlier, and it's in the book, is the abandonment issue. What did you learn as you researched that issue that we should do as a society? Well, I think there are a lot of people out here that try to reach out to them. I don't know so much if they're in the social services, but um, I think that parents basically need to take being good parents more seriously and take children's lives and their well-being and their welfare more seriously. 
because what, what they learn in the first four or five years of their lives stays with them. So if children experience abuse of any kind, of any kind, um, emotional, physical, psychological abuse, it stays with you. And some parents need to understand they don't need to be parents because you can, parents can ruin a child's life. Um, and I feel for them. I feel for the children. I really do. And that's one reason why I have so much respect for teachers who care. Um, I just do. Exactly. All kids deserve great teachers. But one thing I want to thank you for is this great new book. It's sure to be a New York Times bestseller yet again. Who asked you? Go out there, everybody, and buy it. Terry, thanks for your inspiration. Look forward to meeting you soon. You're welcome. Thank you.